I'm going to quickly show you how to make a crossband repeater using two Quensheng or Baofeng radios. <clears throat> Any of the generic radios will work as long as they have the Kenwood type connector. Now when you buy these cheap radios, they always come with an earpiece, which I personally have never used. Maybe you do, but I at some point just started throwing them away. Fortunately, I didn't throw away the last two because I had a brilliant idea. Using just the wires that came with the earpieces, I was able to splice these wires together. And the reason they're making that noise will be apparent in a minute. I was able to splice these wires together to get uh, a crossband repeater. So what I have is a Quensheng at 144.195, I believe. I have it in with the reverse display, which needs to go away, but I haven't gotten around to fixing that. This one over here is on 443.575, and, and they're connected um, in their earphone ports just by a wire that I've set up, and I'll talk about that in a minute, and my really bad splice job. Um, crossband repeat. So if you're familiar with crossband repeat, basically you can transmit uh, from one frequency to another, for example, uh, this is going to be my transmitter, and over here is going to be my receiver. Um, I'm going to transmit to this radio, and this radio hearing that at uh, 2 meters is going to repeat that signal at 70 centimeters, which is going to be picked up by this radio. By the way, the VGC radio that requires you to have the app is absolute junk. Don't do it. Anyway. So what we're going to do is get these guys ready. And the idea here is, and I'm only going to key this for a second because it's just going to screech at me because this is going to be a, a, a feedback loop. All right, so you can see I transmitted on my new Bofeng and it went here to here to there. And the only thing connecting these guys is the little uh, earphone connector dealies. So here's what I had to do to make this work. Um, you splice your earphone wires and you're going to get uh, four wires. I recommend that you uh, Google Baofeng earpiece wiring diagram. You'll get four wires that come out of here. Red, blue, green, and gold. Gold meaning just not covered in anything. Now these wires are, are fibrous wires, so there's very little copper and a lot of fiber that they're wrapped around. So once you get the wire spliced, I recommend take a cigarette lighter and run it over the exposed wires to get down to the metal. Burn off all of that, that fiber that, that um, is in there to sort of buffer them, uh, because you need to be able to work with just the metal. Now, um, the color combination, uh, to make this as easy as possible, is blue to green. And so you would cross from each side. This blue goes to this green. This green goes to this blue. And they all get red. And so you're going to be tying three wires together. You're going to be tying green, blue, red together on both sides. You're not going to use the gold, which would be a PTT. We're not going to use PTT. Now, those wires are not meant to be soldered. And I didn't try. Uh, anytime I tried to solder those in the past, they just burn up because they're not intended for that. Um, so I twisted them together and I used hot glue to sort of cover them and it's it's not a great, it's just for this video, it's not a really great splice job. If I wiggle the wire I'll get some activity uh, through the system that I don't want. And that's because I had to snip the gold. We're not using the PTT so the gold is snipped but it's really hard to keep that from coming in contact with the wires you do want. If you try this project you'll see that. Um, if you can solder those little things, if that's something you can do even better, I just hot glued it all together to give it some rigidity and you can see there's a physical gap here so that um, I could give the wires some clearance. But they're still short in there somewhere. Doesn't really bother me because I, I don't expect to use this. I just kind of did it for you know this demonstration. I could clean it up and do a better job. So using just the cables that came with it, I cut off the earpieces, spliced these together and plugged them in. Now, it's important that your radio has Vox because we have the Vox set on both radios. And so the Vox is set to two by default and that's where I left it, it seems to work best. Now I tuned this to two meters so when I key up my two meter radio, it receives it. That triggers uh, the Vox on this side and causes it to transmit to this radio. Why would you use a crossband repeater? 
there's a lot of uh, a lot of different reasons for it. I've never kind of really had to use it, but the 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 idea is this. Let's say um, I want to use my little little radio here for walking around the house and talking, but I can't hit the two meter repeater with this. Um, and we're just going to say I don't have access to, to 70 centimeter. I'm trying to hit the two meter repeater. However, if I'm in my attic or on the roof, I can hit the two meter repeater. And so what we would do with something like that, or even in a situation like this, or this is, this is 70 centimeters only. Okay. So two meters isn't an option. I want to talk two meters. So let's, let's say that. So what I would do is I'd put these guys upstairs in the attic and up high together. Now, you've got four foot of, of wire between them, and I used as much wire as possible because, in theory, you do want to put as much distance between the two as possible um, when you're doing cross-band repeat. And, sure, so you can get them, like, four feet apart, that's why, and that's plenty, and that's why I left the wire that way. So the idea is I will use low power, 70 centimeters, to go to my 70 centimeter input, for example, and this will receive it on 70 centimeters and it's going to switch it over here and it's going to send it out to two meters to that repeater that I can barely reach. So I can walk around my house with this weak little 70 centimeter radio and talk on that two meter repeater all the way out there. So that's a, that's a case example for what you might use a cross band repeater for. But generally what people do is they, you know, they get these up high. You could put this in a campsite up high up in a tree or something, the combination of these guys. And that would allow you to talk, um, say, 440 to uh, 144 megahertz to get the signal further out than you might get in the wild with 440. So I'm just throwing some, some options, you know, some ideas about why you might use cross-banding. I don't. I think it's a really cool thing, though. I would really like to have a purpose for cross-banding, but um, I don't. So since so many hams have these uh, quenchings sitting around, I personally got tired of them fast. Then it occurred to me I could do this, so there's a little project I was able to do. So all you need is the earphone adapters, splice those wires together, plug them in, set Fox for two, set your transmit and receive, everything's ready to go. Cheap cross-band repeat.